Hello and welcome to Stein. My name's Andy. Thank you so much for, for being with us today um, and especially warm welcome if this is your first time. Um, I hope that you feel right at home. Let's begin as always with our prayer of approach. As we go there's a there's a sheet which you can um, download and print which will keep track of where we're going. You've got space to record reflections as you go but you don't need that. Anyway let's let's begin with our prayer of approach. Loving God, we're here to worship you. Help us to remember that you're here with us. May we pray to you in faith, use technology to connect with each other and listen to your word with eagerness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's sing today our first song, Morning Has Broken. question and um, invite you all to, to tell a story or to reflect on a story um, from your own life and later on we'll, we'll see how this connects in with the Bible story. So today we're going to be thinking about a bit in John's Gospel where Jesus says that he will draw all people to him. So can you think, and I hope this isn't too vague a question, can you think of a time when you've noticed people being drawn to something, um, when you notice people suddenly catching on and being drawn to something, um, and let's let's kind of keep it outside of the, the the Christian story. So people drawn to something that isn't God, not necessarily in a in a negative way, but when people are really caught on and got drawn towards something that's that's caught their interest. Okay, I hope that works. Is a question. Um, if, you, if you're with me live um, in the watch party, then I'd love to hear what you have to say. Um, type that into the comments. If you're watching this on YouTube later on, um, just think through what would be your response. Okay, are you ready? Let's go. 
Let's sing again now, um, a song which we haven't done here before. Lord, you have my heart. pray together our breakthrough prayer. Join me. God of love, God for all, your purposes are more beautiful than we can possibly imagine. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Help us let go of all that holds us back. Open our lives and our churches to new seasons of humility and faith, of change and growth. Shake us up with the good news of Jesus Christ, and show us the way. Amen. 
If you're with me here live now in the watch party, I invite you to type a word or two into the comments that expresses why God is particularly good for you today. And these will be our prayer of adoration. Let's go. Let's sing now the splendour of the King. to confess our sins and failings to God. When I say, Lord have mercy, if you'll reply, Lord have mercy. Let's pray. Lord, you are steadfast in your love and infinite in your mercy. You welcome sinners and invite them to be your guests. We confess our sins, trusting in you to forgive us. We have yielded to temptation and sinned. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We have turned from our neighbours in their need. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We have resisted your word in our hearts. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and keep us in life eternal. Amen. We now turn to the scriptures and the time of the service where we listen out for God's Spirit speaking to us through these ancient words. Today the passage is John 12, 20 to 33. Neil is going to read it to us today 
Um, there's an awful lot going on in this passage. Um, as, as Neil reads it to us, um, I invite you as always to listen out for words or phrases that jump out at you as being particularly, particularly resonant, particularly striking, and make a note of them on a bit of paper. And then afterwards, I'll share some thoughts and uh, excitingly, I'll share some, share some drawings and pictures that some of the young people um, in the church have done, which uh, how they've interpreted this passage. But for now, let's hear the good news according to John. Now, among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life will lose it. And those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there will my servants be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honour. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I've come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I'm lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. So as I said, there's an awful lot going on in that passage. And I want to show you like a, a structure of how this all, all fits together. Um, so I think in this, in, when John put this bit together in his gospel, he, he included lots of little, lots of different elements and they kind of form like a loop. So it starts off with these Greek people wanting to see Jesus. Then Jesus says that the hour has come. I'll come back to that later. And then he, he kind of weaves in four different chunks um, which are dealt with in the other Gospels, Matthew, Mark and Luke. So there's a bit about seeds having to die. There's a bit about having to lose your, lose your life to find it. You lose your psyche to find your Zoe, which we've talked about quite recently in, the, um, in one, of these, one of these services. Then there's a kind of John's version of the Gethsemane story where Jesus' soul is troubled. Um, there's an audible voice from heaven, which some people mistake. Again, that doesn't happen elsewhere in John's Gospel, uh, where it happens at Jesus' baptism, the transfiguration in the others. And then we're looping back now. Um, we've got the, the sense of judgment, and then which I'll, I need to unpack and will do later. And then finally, this idea that Jesus will draw all people to him when he's lifted up. And that is where I think we need to focus on. So the thing, it starts with these two, is it two? Um, these Greek people anyway, wanting to see Jesus. And it ends after this whole loop, back again at the idea that all people will be drawn to Jesus. Um, so this is, I think, the, the heart of this, and the rest of it is kind of like a, a detour on the way. Um, I, uh, on last Friday evening, we, we have a, we have a sort of teenagers group that meets called Rocks PM and while we're in lockdown we're doing that on Zoom and this week um, I asked the, the people who were there to do a drawing or some kind of artistic representation of how they pictured Jesus drawing all people to him. I didn't explain the passage much, I wanted to give them free, let their imaginations run free. Um, so. And we, so we've recorded the, the video of them. So with their permission, um, they're going to introduce themselves and show you their beautiful artwork. 
So hello, my name's Lexi, and this is my picture. So hopefully you can see that. So it's Jesus on the cross, and then all the people are being drawn to Jesus. Um, and I put the verse around the edge. So yeah, that was my my vision from the passage. Okay. So hi, my name's Ailish, and I have done this. It says Jesus loves all because he does and he loves the homeless which is the hand he loves people in jail he loves the LGBTQ he loves young mums the other way he loves people that have anxiety and he just loves everybody and then that's the thing and that's what I thought. Um, hi, uh, I'm Oni, and uh, this is what I did. So, so um, I drew some magnets. I wrote out the um, verse, and this is just a depiction of Jesus that I really like, um, except I copied from it. But, yeah, I um, really imagined Jesus to have looked like this, and, yeah. That's just my interpretation of it. Oh, sorry. Hello, my name is Kitty. Mine is very simple. So, oh, can you see that? I wrote out the verse here and I drew some like butterflies slash moths, but make them prettier because moths are like drawn to light and that's like, you know. So, yeah. And then I just added some little things here. So that's mine. It's very simple, but yeah. That's How good are they? Isn't that wonderful? Um, such an imaginative way of, of depicting this. So just so I can refer back to this later, we had um, Lexi's vortex, uh, Kitty's moths being drawn to a light, Oni's magnet drawing in um, iron and steel, and Ailish's love um, for all people, um, unconditional. So, that there are four different ways of picturing the, the way that Jesus will draw all people to himself. Now the question is, why does that not happen now? This was a question that John would have been wrestling with at the time. He'd be well aware that not everybody had responded to the, to the love of Jesus. And of course, some people um, seem resistant. So, we need to kind of go further around that loop and find out what's happening. Um, why did Jesus have to die? Why did Jesus have to die? There seems to be, this seems to be the heart of this, of this passage here. So people want to, Jesus will draw all people to himself like moths to a flame, but it doesn't seem to happen. And Jesus' death on the cross somehow unlocks this, um, unlocks this conundrum. Jesus is wonderful. God is wonderful and loving and where we find our home and rest. But yet some people don't come and we don't come fully. Um, as, as people who follow Christ, we're still partly resistant, of course, to, the, to being drawn into God's love. So why is it that there's a resistance? Okay, we need to go further around that loop up and up at the start and look at the idea of judgment. Um, in the passage, Jesus said, this is the judgment. Now, when you hear the word judgment, I wonder how you hear that. I wonder if you feel that as being God judging the things that you've done wrong. Um, God looking and being picky about the things that you've failed on in your life. Perhaps it fills you with... You know, perhaps it's a, a word which um, brings you down in a way. But in this passage, at least, the idea of judgment is quite different to that. It says, this is the judgment, that the ruler of the earth will be cast out. And what that means um, is that, well, just going back a step, it means that God is not the ruler of the earth. God is not the ruler of this earth, according to Jesus, according to the way that John has presented this in his gospel. Jesus is not the ruler of the earth. 
God is not in control. God is not in charge of this world. There's a different ruler. But their days are numbered. And it says that on the, in the crucifixion, Jesus will get rid of the ruler of the world. Now, we're not talking about, I don't know, I don't know who you think the ruler of the world might be. I'm not talking about Joe Biden or um, Elon Musk or, um, you know, any, anyone um, like that who has power and influence. It's a spiritual sense that there is a spiritual evil force ruling this world and that manifests in many, many different shapes. So there's a, an evil force over the world which is causing it not to be as it should be. And in other bits of the scriptures written um, before this passage, which John perhaps is drawing on, it says that the God of this age, the ruler of the age, has blinded the eyes of unbelievers. There's this understanding that something is blocking God's ability to reach out to people. And this, this spiritual force is the root of all sin. Um, sin kind of means separation. So there's something which is separating people from the God who made them and loves them. And the good news of this passage is that Jesus is saying that he will cast out the ruler of the age. He will get rid of that separation and then he will draw all people to him. So do you remember the four ways of picturing God's love drawing people in? We had the vortex, um, a bit like water going down a plug hole. Now, if you put a plug in a sink, the water obviously can't do that spiraling down. It's a bit like, I think the passage is saying, Jesus is gonna pull the plug so that the water can spin and everyone gets drawn into God's love. And um, going down the plug hole is a good thing in this model. Um, Kitty had the idea of moths being drawn to a, to a light. So maybe at the moment the light is shaded. Perhaps there's a lampshade which is stopping the light from getting out. Jesus is saying, one day, the lampshade will be removed and the moths will better come to the light. Oni had the idea of Jesus being, his face being like a magnet, um, which pulls in, uh, you know, certain types of metal towards it. In fact, everything gets pulled in by a magnet. Um, as, a, as a science teacher, you kind of teach that there are kind of four magnetic materials, iron, steel, cobalt, and nickel. But actually, everything is magnetic. Everything is attracted by a magnet. Just some things are way more than others. Um, if ever you've had an MRI scan, a magnetic resonance imaging scan that works on your body, being attracted by magnets and vibrating in, in step with the magnetic field all around you, and you're not made of iron. So the, what am I saying? What I'm saying is that uh, one day everything will be attracted properly to the magnet. Some things are kind of weakly attracted at the moment, but one day everything gets pulled into the magnet of God's love. And Eilish is the, the idea of God loving everybody is perhaps more abstract, but perhaps therefore a little bit easier to, to understand. God loves everybody and it's the love of God, which is the thing that draws people in. And I love the way that Eilish was able to explain how inclusive God's love is to the different groups of people who might feel that they're not loved by God. So what would be the block here? What would be the block? Maybe it's bad church tradition, bad church teaching has led us to think that some groups of people are not loved by God. Maybe we've got a misunderstanding a misconception of what sin is and what separation is. I think Eilish has got it just right, that God loves everybody. So perhaps part of um, the, the ruler of the world being cast out means we need to reevaluate re the way that we have portrayed God and his, his opinion of people, particularly people on 
the, the margins and the outside who have been pushed out by the church over, you know, over many, many hundreds of years. So one day, Jesus will cast out the ruler of the earth and all people will be drawn to Jesus. When does this happen? I think there's a, a gradual process here. Back in the, the story um, told in John's Gospel, this is set before Jesus' death and resurrection. Remember, some Greek people wanted to come and see Jesus. And you may have thought, well, so what? <laughs> but that was really, really important because these are people who shouldn't be attracted to the, the Jewish um, Messiah as Jesus was at that time. Um, these are people who have, you know, the word is getting out, in other words. The, the attraction of Jesus is spreading beyond where you'd expect it to. The, um, the dam is beginning to leak. There's a bit of a, you know, it, the good news is starting to get out. When Jesus was killed on the cross and when he was raised from the dead, that was a pivotal moment in defeating. That's when the ruler of the world was defeated. But after that, still, we're in the case, like when John wrote this, that was after the resurrection. But still, not everybody had got it. So there's a gradual, um, there's a gradual defeat of the things which block people from coming to God. The, the defeat happens gradually, and we're not there yet. The ruler of the world is not yet fully defeated, but one day, one day, it will be. And one day, Jesus will draw all people to him because there'll be nothing to block. There'll be nothing to block this unfailing, attractive, drawing love of God. So I've, I've been, uh, reading a couple of books recently about um, how today's increasingly secular age it causes people to find little place for for God and for, well, for church in their life. So um, this book is a kind of Christian view on it and this one is a sort of more broad view of what, of why people seem to be um, resistant to um, resistant to connection with God and others in this age. And they're, they're both, um, they both say that the, the main issue today is just the pace of life gets, life gets so quick, we're expected to do so much, and life and society accelerates, gets faster and faster, and we have less and less time for the things which matter to us, and we're more and more concerned about increasing our, our sort of reach into the world, that we, we find little time for connection with God and with with others. So maybe, maybe that's one of the things that we need to to work on is thinking about what is it that prevents us from being drawn to God? What is it that prevents us from hearing and feeling this love which should draw us closer? Perhaps our lives have been influenced by the ruler of the age which says you have to go faster, have more stuff, achieve more. Um, fit more in. Perhaps we need to play our part in defeating, casting out the ruler of the world so we can be drawn better to Jesus and we can inspire people around us in the same situation to do the same. So the good news here is that Jesus will draw all people to him. We have a hope that one day all of the blocks, all of the, all of the barriers will be removed. And on that day, it will be such an obvious choice. It will be such an obvious choice that people will, will finally go with the flow, go down the plug hole, get pulled to the light, get pulled to the magnet, realise that God made them and loves them. And I hope that that will be an irresistible, an irresistible choice on that day for everybody. In the meantime, let's be, let's go first. Let's get pulled in to God's love. That's where our home is. That's where our future is. So let's sing No Longer Slaves.
time now to pray for the needs of the world. When I say, Lord, in your mercy, if you'll reply in your head or out loud or typed, hear our prayer. Let's pray. Let's pray for God's church throughout the world. For all the people here in Stye and for all the other expressions of church that are taking place during lockdown. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have power and influence and for all who govern the nations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the powerless, for all victims of famine and war, all victims of coronavirus, and all who strive for justice and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the afflicted and sorrowful, and for all who need our prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember before God those who have passed from this life in faith and obedience. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, through the self-offering of your Son, you have filled our lives with your presence. Help us in our sufferings and trials and strengthen us in our weakness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And let's share in the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. So, may you be increasingly drawn to the love and grace of Jesus. May the things which block the, the, the irresistible pull of Jesus, may the things that temporarily block it get weaker in your life and in those that you love. And may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be yours now and forever.